Hi, I'm Stephen Cronin and today I'm going to show you how to paint a simple seascape with boats, like a little harbour scene in a sort of dramatic evening light effect. So th this one I just, just made it up as I went along. I was trying to create this sort of really, really mean, moody, atmospheric sky with dark clouds contrasting nicely against the light, lighter areas of the sky area. And then we got several boats in the harbour and I've done a bit of, fair bit of scraping out with the card to create all these rocks in the foreground also sweeping round the bay into the distant land but before I show you how I painted this let's have a quick look at the materials so the, the colours I used of the seven here on the palette it was ultramarine cadmium yellow raw sienna and light red, just the four colours and three brushes, most we've done with the larger on Ransom Hake got a little flat brush here used for the boats and number three rigger just for the bird really and, and for signing the thing I'm going to kick this all off with a big eight brush this is just clear water all over the paper just to soften everything off and then I'm going to go a bit of, bit of raw sienna, a bit of light red bit of cadmium yellow and I'm going to brush that in starting at the top and then work my way slowly down I'm trying to just leave little little bits of light in the middle a bit more red a bit more yellow working my way down the page and I'll come back to it the top again in a bit with a darker colour All the way down to the bottom. <clears throat> as you see, I have just little, little bits of um, unpainted bits, and now that'll act as the light, the light source when we come to it later. So now I'm doing a bit of red, a bit of blue, just a touch more water, dry it up a little bit, move some of the paint, and then let's carry on at the top here. A bit more blue, ultramarine, a bit of red, a bit of blue. More paint on the brush, a bit more water. Just need to want to see just dripping down the paper a little bit more. Get a bit more yellow into there. A bit more blue. And then let's just brush this in from either side. I'm not 100% happy with it, so what I'm going to do is give it a quick dry. stretch a little bit so I'm just going to pull it tight against the piece of plywood there I got it fixed to on the easel make sure that's dry again the whole I don't, I don't like the way it's gone on basically the way the paint's got unreacted with the paper. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to imagine that's my first wash. I'm going to put a second wash on. So it's just again clean water and I'm just going to brush that all the way down to the bottom of the paper. And because I've dried it, it'll stay fairly well in place. If it was professional paper and paints and everything, it'd probably stay exactly in place, but I don't mind a bit of paint mixing around the paper. It all adds to the, to the painting, the excitement. What I'm doing is a bit of red, a bit of, actually I'm going to get that brighter, there's too much blue in it, I want it brighter, so I'm doing red, cadmium yellow, and it's got a bit, little bit brighter, see, and let's bash some of that in, to see what it looks like on the paper, paper's very wet now, so the advantage of that, 
is all these colours are mixing together. Now I've got the lights, so I'm going to concentrate on the darks now. So I'm going red, blue. Let's get some cloud up here. Something going on. And I'll bring that down. These are like clouds now. The horizon is going to be about a third of the way up. Let's have a few clouds on this side. A bit of red, a bit of blue again. And I'm just going to bring these clouds all the way down to the horizon. As it dries, it will go on stronger and stronger. It's still pretty wet, so while it's still wet, I'm just going to try and create this central this area down the middle. Get some up there. I might just dry this slightly just to speed it up a little bit. against the board again and I might just be fine just to put a few more little clouds in I'll see how wet it is when I've when I finished messing about with these clips I'm going red blue and it's still it's still just 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 wet enough is it on borderline Let's see what it looks like with the, the tissue work. That's looking a right mess. Yeah, I'm not going to leave it there. I'm not going to mess about with the sky anymore. But what I am going to do next is the horizon line. So I'm going to. I want a bit of it. All the everything that's gone into the sky basically is going to be the colour of that horizon. So I'm just giving a bit of everything I've used so far. And it's a nice thick mix. You can have a really low horizon. I'm going to come down somewhere like that. Now, because the paper's dry, almost dry, see how thick it's going on there? How strong that tone is. So I'm trying to keep it level, parallel with the bottom of the paper. So that it's not sloping one way or another. I'm just holding the brush parallel like that. I can't quite, because it's quite a well worn brush this is now, I can't quite get a perfect chisel edge. Might be time for a new brush soon I think. Reload the brush and then let's just come down the bottom, just sweep that in there like that. And I'll, once I've done this I'll just you do a little bit of scraping with the plastic car just to do a few rocks here and there. Always works best when it's done against I did I'd like this a little bit lighter, just that sort of lightness there. So I painted over it all unfortunately. Just wouldn't want to put anything there or not. I might just I think I'll uh, shall I yeah go ahead. Bring that the bay around a little bit. Now once this is as dark as I want it to be, I'll switch to the switch to the card. Yeah, I think that's dark enough now. I'm pretty much I think I'll finish with the height now, so that can go in the water jar. Then what I'm gonna do, it's not quite flat against the board, so before I start scraping, it really needs to be flat against the board before you start. Otherwise the paper will just be flapping around and do your edging. So I'm imagining the light's coming from down there. So I'm doing it left-handed so that the 
the right hand side of these scrapings catch the light. Because the paint, when I'm quite thick, I haven't got to wait for it to sort of half dry, which is what, what you'd normally have to do. And scraping straight away. Big foreground one there. And then, imagine the light's coming down there. So I'm switching to my right hand now, and you can see the, the light's catching the left hand side of these rocks. Well, these are more just pebbles, I'm just dabbing at the paper, just, just scrapping, scraping the paint off, revealing the sort of white of the paper underneath. Gives it this nice sort of light rock effect. Um, well, I'll go to the boat now, so it's got to be dry. So, back to the air dry. This little little flat brush I've got, it's only a tiny little brush. Dip that in the water and then I'm gonna go into this dark this dark mix I got down there. Some of it's sort of red and, and uh, blue. Loosen that up a little bit. Right, and we wanna knock we'll just put two or three little boats. First little boat shape, and then just a little reflection underneath, and then little mast, mast up there like that. Pop the reflection in down below. There's the first one. Now let's have another one. Let's put another one there, <coughs> right next to it. Again, just reflect something down below, and then the mast. This one's going to be slightly bigger, so it needs to come down slightly further, just past that one there. Always doing the same below as they are high. Um, let's have another one. Another one about there. Can't see this one very well, I've got the land in front of it. Again, let's put the reflection down there, then the mast. Mast going off. This one's the biggest one yet. to come down further than the others. What I mustn't do, I'm putting them all so they're all equally spaced. I'm trying to avoid that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick someone in there without even pretend there's another boat behind it. There's a reflection. Just because they were all looking a bit sort of unnaturally evenly spaced. I want it to look I want it to look random. So let's put, put another one this one slightly further away, so it's slightly smaller. So the mass will go up slightly less. So they're the close one. I'm just going to do some little, just a few little dabs along there. These are boats that are further away. Because I want one to sort of stand out more than any of the others. Um, I think it just needs one, just something small over there, just to just to even it out a bit. I think I'm going to go with that. So finally, switch to the little brush, little rigger brush, and I'm going to first make sure me me hands clean. Put a little bird up there. And then finally, um, just going to stick my name in the corner. I'm going to call this one for you. So, let's put a mount on it and see what it looks like. So, here's our finished painting in the mount. So, let's go and have a closer look at it. 
So if you remember, it was basically two two washes really. The first wash, I just weren't happy with it. It didn't look right the way it had uh, come out. So a lot of this is um, it, it's sort of random the way these patterns and shape happen. But the more you practice, the the better the better you can control what's happening on the paper. So starting with the sky, there was uh, it was sort of a bit of raw sienna, but there was a lot of light red ultramarine. Um, the, the sort of orangey colours were light red and cadmium yellow. Skies, I always try to have sort of dark areas and, and really light areas to get a nice contrast, look nice and mean and moody. So I was keen to sort of preserve this, this sort of light area in the sky and try to reflect it. I'm, I'd like to have had it a little bit lighter here just so it looked as if it was reflecting that light in the water. These clouds, there's a lot of ultramarine in there, um, light red, just to create sort of really dark clouds cutting across the light area of the sky. Some of that dark, you can see the water, the, the variation from the sort of dark area to the lighter area in the middle. I used to faff around with ages for water, how on earth do you paint water? And then I found the best way by painting it is by, by not painting it really. So with all the background in, it was time to put in this headland really, really dark, just so that it silhouettes against the sort of evening sky. This bay sweeps all the way around here, and then you can see where I've done quite a lot of scraping out with the card. Now the reason I did it sort of left-handed on there, just so you can imagine the lights coming from here and just catching the side, the right-hand side of the rocks with the shadow on the left, and then on this side you've got the light coming down here. So I've done this one right handed so it looks like the light's catching it there and you've got the shadow on the right hand side. The boats are put in very very simply using a small flat brush. Don't forget to reflect the masts down in the water, it really helps give that impression of water. Um, obviously they need to be the same below as they are above. And then we've got our little bird flying up there in the sky amongst the uh, clouds. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Uh, keep practicing. Any questions, please ask. Um, all these paintings, same as all the other paintings I do, are available in my eBay shop. So, best of luck with your watercolours, and I'll see you again soon.